So yeah, I'm gonna talk about uh, vector tile, uh, sorry, not vector tiles at all, but vector mosaic in Widget Server, it's all server side, there are no vector tiles involved. So first of all, a uh, quick shout out to my company, GeoSolutions, we are based in Italy with offices in the United States. We provide support and custom development and core development for a number of open source projects. Uh, we are open at our core, so we are part of OSGEO. We participate actively, actively in OGC through testbeds and uh, uh, through standards which are important to GeoInt, which would be the federal government in the United States. Okay, so let's have an introduction uh, to the problem. Let me tell you a, a, a couple of little stories. Example one, we have uh, um, a use case at UMETSAT. UMETSAT is the European organization that manages some of the satellites that we funded, like Copernicus and the like. And um, they have this data set called ASCAT, which comes from uh, NOAA. Uh, ASCAT provides a set of uh, wind vectors, uh, which are uh, collected every 90 minutes, so high collection ratio. And uh, uh, it's a time series. We have uh, uh, one collect every 90 minutes for the past 20 months, which means right now we have almost 10,000 uh, time uh, in, the, in the series. And each collect averages more or less 200,000 points. We have some that have 500,000, some that only have 100,000, but they are kind of big. Oh, and uh, we have a, a time navigation in the client powered by some of our protocol extensions that allow us to say, okay, there's time data here and you can drill into it and figure out which times you have in a particular area and so on. And uh, the points here are nicely classified but level of detail so you don't really need to render all those 200,000 points but you have 10 uh, classification levels and so you start by drawing just a few of them and then more and more and eventually you reach the, the level at which uh, we render wind barbs. And uh, well, only at that level we render every single point, but on a small area. Now, uh, we are storing this as a PostgreSQL PostGIS table and if you run the numbers, you will find that we are storing lots and lots of points in a single table. That became a performance problem eventually. We started by partitioning the table over time so that the table is basically split physically in subtables, and that improved things a lot. But uh, in terms of uh, uh, growing up, we are stumbling into uh, issues. Uh, there is a number of, uh, limited number of partitions that you can efficiently manage, especially on older versions of PostgreSQL. PostgreSQL got better at partitioning over time and uh, the cost is growing. The cost is just going, going up. Um, as I said at the time, the, the client provides time navigation, so we need to quickly grab a range of available times and, uh, uh, and eventually the actual times. We use an extension in GeoServer called WMTS Multidimensional, where we have a, a request which is not standard, it's called Describe Domain, which basically says, okay, I have this bounding box, I have maybe these other um, variable uh, values. Can you tell me the list of, of times that apply in this situation, the, the list of times that we actually have? And uh, uh, it responds. And we use that to power a, a time navigation uh, bar. Uh, so we need to have a very quick time aggregates. Doing the aggregates over that partition table takes forever. So we have a, a secondary lookup table. Example two. Precision farming. So tractors moving the field, collecting data at high frequency, like every minute. How many seeds they sowed, how much product they deployed, information about the engine, like RPM, how much fuel, blah, blah, blah. You got a ton of attributes, which are collected once per minute. One collect can grow pretty big. I asked the, the customer in question to send me the, the largest that they had on, uh, on file, and they threw me back this thing that has four million little rectangles for one collect of a tractor of a, on a field. Now, multiply this by a number of trips by, for that tractor, by the number of tractor, tractor that a farm might have, and by the number of customers that you might be following that have all these tractors. And the, the, again, the numbers pile up very quickly. To give you an idea, that thing that seems to be drawn with a, with a chalk is actually uh, uh, 
as I zoom in on that corner, I get there, and then I zoom in on that little corner, I actually start seeing the polygons. So it's actually a millions, literally, of tiny rectangles put together to form something that I might be printing out and hanging on my wall. Um, so, uh, as I said, uh, multiple uh, tractors, multiple collector customers, multiple customer, and so on. In this case, we don't even have a, a good classification of the points, so we are basically supposed to render them all every time. And when you have a four million, well, mm, <laughs> that, that becomes a little bit of a problem. Um, so, in summary, we have um, one massive vector data set organized in slices, sub data set, by time, by customer, by tractor. There, are, there is an organization principle uh, behind it, but generally speaking, I can take out one sub file out of the massive set of uh, data. And we want stable performance for data extraction, give me quickly all the data from that slice. And I want quickly aggregates. Give me all the times that are available in the data set on all the times that are available in a certain bounding box, and so on. And uh, well, we wouldn't like to uh, pay a fortune for it, so we want to contain costs. Just to give you an idea, here is some reference that I found on the internet about how much does it cost to use Amazon Aurora for Postgres. It's $0.1 per gigabyte per month, plus you pay for the request, plus you pay for backups, plus you pay for IOPs, plus blah, 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 blah. It piles up really quickly. If we were able to store the same data in S3, the cost would go down just for storage five times. So there's a kind of a interesting incentive there to be able to store the data in S3 if I can, rather than in uh, Aurora. And so enter the vector mosaic in plugin. In GeoSolutions, we have a long history of using the image mosaic plugin. The image mosaic plugin is the one that allows you to take several raster images and put them together. Now, we don't use it only to put together images in space, but also to filter images in time. So if you have a time series of uh, satellite collects, for example, you can store uh, all the references to the images in a table, which is the index of the mosaic, reference each file, and, and then say, oh yeah, I would like to say to get the Sent Sentinel-2 collect of this particular date. You scan quickly the index, it's, it's fast, even if there are millions of entries, and you get one file reference, and boom, you render it. So it's, it's really quick. And so we uh, designed uh, the vector mosaic in store just after that concept. We have one or eventually more index tables that point to uh, external files which can be stored on your file system or uh, on the cloud or wherever you decide uh, to, to put them. I'll show you some examples. And the index can have a reference to the, to the file, sure, uh, a location in space, sure, but also whatever extra attribute you want. So time, tractor ID, customer ID, blah, blah, blah. So that identifies your one slice of vector data that you wanted to take out of, of the large pile. Uh, we are mixing the attributes, so when I have, uh, that's an example of an index table that points to various geo packages, and it has the URL, a file footprint, but then also a time, a tractor ID, and so on, and then each geo package has uh, the attributes of each and every tiny uh, rectangle. And when we uh, put them together, we basically merge the uh, filter attributes of the index with the attributes of the geo package and come up with a um, summarized uh, view of, of the data. Now, which stores can you use for the index and for the satellite files? Well, the, the, the Mosaic store is actually designed in a very generic way, so it, it really doesn't care. In GeoServer, there is this abstraction of store that is something that uh, can tell you which tables you have and fetch data out of them, and it hides you from the fact that, that uh, something is a geo package or a flat geo buff of PostgreSQL or Elasticsearch and so on and so on. So you can pretty much do whatever you want with the image mosaic uh, plugin. You can have whatever index store you want and whatever satellite store you want. But you, there are some combinations that work better than others, and, and so let me, let me tell you about them. So um, when we configure a, an image mosaic, we, we tell it, OK, which store is the index store? And uh, we go and pick another store which is already configured in GeoServer. Uh, what is a, a, a good index uh, store? Well, it can index the search fields, 
so I can quickly locate the files to open based on time, bounding box, customer ID, whatever is my search field. I need to be able to do it very quickly, so indexing is important. And I need to be able to compute aggregates uh, quickly. Give me the list of all the times available in the current bounding box, or give me all the times available for this customer, and so on and so on. So quick aggregates. That's the other characteristics that I want out of a, uh, an index store. A DBMS would do both of them. So I'm not trying to kick PostgreSQL completely out of the picture. I'm still going to use it most of the time, but just to store the index rather than storing uh, hundreds of millions of records. And then there is the target quote-unquote file store. What format would be a, a good uh, for, uh, um, choice for it? Well, it can really be anything, and we played with uh, shapefile, geopackage, flat geobuff, and also your old data database, the one that you are trying to get rid of. Uh, it depends on your use case. You, um, a couple of those lines uh, might make you think that I'm flipping mad, uh, and so I, I need to explain myself a little bit. Shapefiles in 2024? Really? Really? Uh, the original uh, found, uh, funder for uh, this activity is already generating shapefiles out of their tractors. They come out of the tractor, shapefiles. And uh, they had no reason to convert them into anything else. So yeah, they are using an, a PostgreSQL index that uh, points to shapefiles. Shapefile is not such a bad format in the end. It has been a reliable workhorse for the past 27 years. In GeoServer, if you want to render a ton of uh, lines and points, it is the second fastest format anyways, because we optimized the, to the bone the code that, that can read it. Uh, and it's way faster than, for example, for PostgreSQL. Um, and, well, it has downsides. Uh, you cannot store it on S3. It has to be on a file system, local or network file system. It doesn't have alphanumeric indexes, so you, you cannot sub-filter inside the, the shapefile efficiently. But if it fits your use case, why not? Geopackage. Well, Geopackage. OGC standard. Uh, it's simple, self-contained database with all your vector data. Can you store uh, uh, in, in, uh, in Geopackage? Sure, you can. Um, and uh, it's very good if you need to sub-filter inside the Geopackage because it has internal indexes. However, it's not uh, as fast uh, as Shapefile is. And your, local, your storage still needs to be the local disk or a network disk. No S3, no blob storage. Flat GeoBuff. Flat GeoBuff is a performant binary encoding for geographic data. And it's actually the fastest GeoServer format if you want to render everything at once. It has in, an internal spatial index, and the, 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 the format is designed just to be very quick to, to go through. In addition, you can store flat GeoBuffs on your local network, but also over HTTP, S3, whatever. So this one allows you to get rid of all the costs and move to blob storage. And the old database, and you might say, wait, didn't you start by saying you want to get rid of it? Sure, I want to get rid of it, but maybe I cannot do it overnight because I already have two terabytes of data in it. And so if I'm managing a time-moving window, maybe I want to keep the old database still around and just chop away at the time slices in the time-moving window management and just add the new slices in the new format rather than doing one massive migration. So if I wanted to flip over the vector mosaic in a week rather than in a month, I can play this kind of game. And just to refer from the index of the mosaic, the old tables with some filters. Performance note: uh, remember that insane four million test deaths, four million polygons test deaths, data set. Those are the rendering times for PostGIS: 113 seconds. For Shapefile: 41 seconds. For FlatGeoBuff: 36 seconds. Sure, it's still too much for any practical use. Uh, can still use some tile caching, but. Flat GeoBuff is like three times faster than PostgreSQL. Where to go from here? Well, go and grab the Vector Mosaic Store. It's a community module available since version 2.23. Uh, usage is growing, so hopefully it's going to become a, a, an extension you can find releases soon. We have been doing a bunch of optimization, both in the Vector Mosaic format itself and in the Flap GeoBuff uh, format. 
so it means that it's best if you try it out on 225 where all the optimization we made are available. What about GeoParquet for granules? GeoParquet is becoming popular um, for, for storing files. Um, it's column oriented, it's very, very well compressed. It's cloud native as well. Uh, there's only one problem, it doesn't have a spatial index. So you might not want to use it to store everything, but you don't have to because with vector mosaic, you can take the large file, split it into zones, spatial zones in this case, and let the index do the spatial search for you. And that's it. Now you have a cloud native format with very good compression. You just have to design your own spatial parti partitioning algorithms. Here I imagine one based on quad trees that stops whenever the, uh, the tile has enough, uh, 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 sorry, has two, two little points, stuff like that. This uh, is uh, not available in your server. It's something looking for sponsors. That's it. Welcome. I understand from that that had I said I want to draw all the red squares from that four million data set that Postgres would have won and not flat you above. Um, yes and no, it depends. Good question. So for example, in the case of ASCAT, I have the LODs, I have nine, uh, nine different zoom, uh, sorry, uh, nine different types which I want to display. Uh, like all kind of cloud uh, data management endeavors, you have to pre-process your data to make it available and fast for one particular use case. So if you wake up in the morning and you just want to render all the reds, that's a problem because you don't have fast search. You have to read the whole file. But if I know in advance that I want to do that kind of uh, operation, then I split the file and have the reds on one side and the yellows on the other. Or in the case of ASCAT, have nine different files. So when I uh, start opening up a particular file and I just want the, the arrows that I would see when I see the entire globe, I only open the LOD0, uh, which is a very tiny file, and then it's fast. But what you don't want to do is to, is to search within a flat your buff. But if you can predict your use case, then you slice your files to optimize for those use cases. That's very common of all uh, cloud data organizations. You make them fast for one particular use case rather than being generic, uh, all, all encompassing stuff like uh, databases. Another question? Uh, how does the reference from the index to the granule in the Postgres database looks like? Well, it depends. It can be uh, as easy as just a URL. So you just point to the location of your file if it's a... I'm, but it, if it's a database, if does it's it a reference database. a table? Uh, right, right. Well, for, for any other store, for any ca case which is more complex, it's a tiny property file. So key value pairs with uh, host, port, uh, username, password, or JNDI reference, or whatever geo server accepts as a set of con configurations to talk to one particular store. So for example, in the case of ASCAT, we, are, we, we do have one JNDI reference to a connection pool, which is uh, the same for all the Okay. And then I have a filter on the side saying, oh, of that table, I want to take only uh, the, the records that match this time range. Okay, so it's not fixed that what is a granule in a database. Okay, no. it can be a row. The, the, be... The, the image mosaic, sorry, the vector mosaic is designed so that uh, uh, it's completely agnostic to the nature of the stores that, that it's, it's going to open. It, and it can be a mix of many things. I could have a mix of uh, geo packages and uh, flood geo buffs and uh, uh, other sources. Think about having a hierarchy of storage. Uh, like you, you keep the, 
the old data on cold storage, which is very cheap, then you need a very, very much compressed um, data source because transferring stuff out is slow. And maybe for the fresh stuff, you use a local disk with uh, whatever format is efficient for that. Yeah. Andrea, uh, how close is this to being an open standard? I mean, how good is documented? Can it be re-implemented in QGIS server or something? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's something so simple, in, in fact, that, uh, that I never thought about making it a standard, to be honest. But, um, for example, the image mosaic, which has been uh, working off the same principles for many years, now has in GDAL sort of an equivalent, which I think is called GTI. It's a generalized table index or something like that. It's, it's like a VRT on steroids, which is basically doing whatever GeoServer is doing, having multiple columns, filtering, and so on. So. I, I can see something like that uh, happening in OGR for vector data as well. There is already a tile index notion in bo for both uh, rasters and vectors, but uh, I, don't, I don't think it uses uh, in, uh, attributes for filtering. I think that Yuka has a question, or an observation probably. Not a question, but a uh, comment. Uh, Map Server has been supporting this kind of system, this OGR tile index mm. for ages, and uh, actually I have been used that uh, for something like 15 years ago. It's a very good idea. Uh, mm -hmm. 